Hi, welcome to this part of my review featuring Sacrifice, an incense and iron role-playing game. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review, featuring this Berserk-inspired role-playing game, where you fight the horrors of the Dark Ages brought upon humanity by Christianity, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about the rules of the game, starting with skill checks. The core mechanic in Sacrifice is the skill check. A skill check is performed by rolling a 20-sided die, adding the corresponding skills modifier, and comparing the total with a number called the difficulty class, which is generally given by the game master. So for example, an easy task has a difficulty class of 10, while a very hard task has a difficulty class of 25. Concerning ability checks, Occasionally, a character may want to do something that is not covered by the available skills. In those circumstances, the game master may ask the player character in question to perform an ability check by rolling three six-sided dice. If the result is equal to or lower than the relevant ability score, the attempt is successful. To evade full effects of certain attacks, all characters can make saving throws as well. Each saving throw category has a number assigned to it, and when a character or monster is afflicted by a spell or attack that needs a saving throw, the player or game master will roll a d20. A success is defined as a result that is greater than or equal to the value specified for the saving throw category. If the result is lower than the specified number, the roll is considered a failure. Some successful saving throw rolls will totally nullify any effect while others will only cause half the damage. Player characters add their level to their saving throws. Minor NPCs or enemy combatants add their hit dice to their save throws. If it's a developed NPC that the game master is treating as a character, then they will instead add their level, as player characters do. Beasts add their hit dice to their saving throws. Monsters add their hit dice as well to their saving throws. When it comes to conditions, you have things such as paralysis, fear, charm, sleep. Some of them will impose penalties or disadvantages to your rolls, and some others will stop you from attacking at all. Now, let's talk about combat. You have a step-by-step -step process. First, you determine surprise. The game master determines whether anyone involved in the combat encounter is surprised. Then you establish positions. The Game Master is in charge of placing all of the characters and their opponents. The Game Master calculates the distance and direction of the foes based on the adventurer's marching order, or specified places in the room, or other location. Then you roll initiative. Everyone involved in the combat encounter rolls initiative, determining the order of combatants' turns. Then you take the turns. Each participant in the battle takes a turn in initiative order. Then you begin the next round. When everyone involved in the combat has had a turn, the round ends. You repeat steps 3 and 4 until the fighting stops, that is, you roll initiative, you take turns, and then a new round begins. Let's talk about the attack roll. Performing an attack works the same as any other skill check. You roll a d20 and add the corresponding ability modifier. As a norm, this is strength for melee and dexterity for ranged. Instead of comparing the final roll to a difficulty class, we use the target's armor class or AC. If the total then equals or exceeds the target's AC, your score is a hit. Since non-player characters or monsters don't have modifiers, the game master must add their hit dice to the attack roll and compare the total with the target's armor class as usual. Concerning turns and rounds, to understand combat, you must know the difference between a turn and a round. A turn is a single combatant's chance to act, while a round is the sum of all the combatants' turns, both player and non-player characters. When all combatants have taken one turn, that round ends and another begins. A turn lasts an average of 10 seconds. The Game Master decides who is surprised at the start of the combat. Each side will immediately notice each other if neither side tries to be sneaky. Otherwise, the Game Master compares everyone's hiding stealth checks to each creature on the opposing side, 
that is their passive perception score. Any character or monster who fails to perceive a threat is caught off guard at the start of the fight. You can't move or do an action on your initial turn of combat if you are surprised, and you can't react until that round finishes. When it comes to initiative, during combat, initiative decides the order of turns. At the start of each round, every player must make an initiative check by rolling a d20 and adding their dexterity modifier to determine their order of initiative. Each member of an enemy combatant or monster group acts at the same time because the game master makes one roll for an entire group of identical creatures. A character or creature that rolls a natural one for initiative loses their turn. A character or creature that rolls a natural 20 for initiative has advantage during their turn. This concludes this part of the review. In the next part, we are going to talk about the different actions you can carry out during the combat turn. We are also going to talk about damage, fatigue, and other details. As you can see, the rules are pretty standard when it comes to a d20-based system, but the old-school Renaissance sensibilities are quite evident. For example, there is not a set number of turns or rounds when it comes to paralysis, charm, sleep, so you don't know exactly how long the effect will last. You have to apply rulings. You have to consider each situation on a case-by-case -case basis. In my case, I would say that if someone is asleep and that creature gets hit, the creature is going to wake up. But in the case of paralysis, I would allow another saving throw. But maybe you can come up with some other reasons as to how you can break free from those effects. Thank you for watching this part of the review and thank you for your likes and your comments. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you and see you later.